So let me just wrap up the sermon by saying this. You know, society has a certain agenda, and it's of the devil. And that society is to that societal agenda is to promote birth control. Society wants you using birth control. I think Exodus 1 shows us why. Because the devil doesn't like it when God's people multiply. And while the Mormons are multiplying, and while the Muslims are multiplying, God's people are having 2.5 children, and it's a shame. We as God's people need to multiply abundantly. And churches would be filled with a new generation that's growing up and learning the word, precept upon precept, line upon line. And they're going to grow up and be by the army for the Lord. But instead, people are refusing to have kids because they're serving the idols of this world and chasing after materialism. Or they're buying into the ideology of the Satan worshiper, Margaret Sanger. Because they're being brainwashed by TV and school and everything else. Or they're believing in this environmental junk that, oh, the earth's overpopulated and we need to reduce the population down to 500 million and all this garbage. You know what? That is of Satan, that Amen. agenda. Amen. This world's not going to be here forever. Amen. Oh, but in the year 2335, the population's going to be too high. This world's not going to be here forever. <laughs> Jesus is going to come back at some point. <laughs> and let the heathen, you know puncture themselves with IUDs and pump themselves full of drugs that make their wife, you know, grow a beard and everything else. You know, let them pump all the birth control. Let the Egyptian population stabilize, but let God's people become more and mightier by following God's advice to be fruitful and multiply and by viewing children as a blessing. Listen to me. Birth control has been a very big factor in the moral decline of this country, period. That's what John R. Rice said would happen in 1946. He said, if this stuff ever were generally used, it'll destroy morality. And that's what it has done. You know why? Even today, I've been hearing from more and more Christians that they think fornication's okay. Because the, the Bibles, these new versions now, the NIV and so forth, they take out the word fornication and they replace it with sexual immorality. Now, you know what immorality means? Pretty much whatever you want to, it to mean. And there are more and more Christians today that are saying, well, as long as you're not a whoremonger, as long as you're not sleeping around, as long as you're not just a complete, loose, promiscuous woman, it's okay before marriage. I'm starting to hear it. When I was a teenager, kids in my youth group believed in it in a Baptist church. And more and more with these new versions and with this wicked ideology, you're hearing this teaching that says, hey, it's okay to go to bed with somebody that you're not married to. Just don't commit adultery and just don't be a whoremonger. But let me tell you something. That kind of stupidity would not even be possible without birth control because you'd be producing all these bastard children. I mean, think about it. If you didn't have birth control and you taught young people, hey, it's okay to, you know, in a committed boyfriend, girlfriend relationship to have this relationship, you'd be producing bastard children all over the place. Yeah. It doesn't even make any sense. But birth control has allowed people to start thinking that way. Yeah, I can fool around. I can experiment. I can be with a few people. No, it's wicked. We need to stay pure until we're married. Yeah. We need to abstain from that relationship until we're married. And then when we're married, we can enjoy that relationship and we can enjoy the product of that relationship, children. And you say, well, I don't want to have that many children. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter what you want because you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And the world will say, my body, my choice. No, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit with your God. And look, you say, well, I can't afford it. Look, God knows what you can and can't afford. If God gives you a child, he'll provide. He'll provide all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And if he thinks you're not ready for a child, he won't give you one. Because he opens and closes the womb. And if he decides that, that you can't afford another one, he won't give you another one. If he decides that it's his will that you have two children, you'll have two, just like Isaac and Rebecca. And if it's God's will that you have one child, you'll have one child, just like Sarah had. And if it's God's will that you have 10 children, you'll have 10, unless you kill them. 
or unless you use barrier methods and natural family planning. And by the way, this stuff destroys marriages. You know, the divorce rate increasing also has to do with the use of birth control. Because, you know, having a normal relationship with your spouse actually improves your marriage. Having a normal, natural, physical relationship with your spouse is good for marriage. And today, we've, we've corrupted that relationship with, with all these weird methods. Because these pills, they affect women psychologically. They affect women physiologically. It's true. Look, you don't think that taking hormones is going to change their personality? Hello. Even men who take hormones. Men who take steroids. Have you ever heard of roid rage? Not road rage, roid rage. Because men who take steroids get angry and aggressive and it's a mind-altering thing. And so are these birth control pills. And they create all kinds of changes in a woman's body that are not conducive to that marital relationship. And I'm here to tell you today that God's way is the best way, the natural way, the Christian way. And if you would get on God's program by faith, and just step out in faith and say, hey, I'm going to do it God's way. You know what? You'll find that God will provide and that God will give you a lot of joy and happiness in your life. And God's going to bless you because the path to God's blessing is through the door of obedience. Amen. And so we need to stop leaning on our own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Do you believe that? Okay, God never told you to use birth control. And every example of it's bad. So why don't you just do it God's way? And you know, you say, well, we're, I'm still waiting for my first child. You know, just be patient, keep praying. God waited 20 years to give Isaac and Rebecca a child. Be patient, wait upon the Lord. Let him direct your paths. You say, well, I'm afraid God's gonna give me too many children. I'm gonna have my own reality show or something. But here's the thing. You know what? God's gonna give you the right amount. Just trust him. Just trust him and let the chips fall where they may. Now, so far, I have eight children. I'm 33 years old. You say, what in the world? But here's the great thing. You say, well, how many are you going to have? It's going to be crazy. But here's the great thing. Eventually, they're going to start becoming adults and leaving. So you're going to get to a certain point where you reach critical mass because they start leaving and then the new ones keep coming in, you know. And so you're, there's, it's going to max out at some point. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm hoping that this vehicle is the last vehicle I have to buy. Because we have a 12-passenger van. And I'm hoping that we can make that thing work until the bitter end, okay? Because, you know, we fit nine people into an eight-passenger for a long time. You know, we can squeeze 13 into that beast out there. And so, you know, I'm, I'm planning on you know, that be in the final vehicle, God willing. But you know what, though? Whatever God has in store, he's going to provide. I'm just going to trust him and just keep doing it the old-fashioned way Amen. and enjoying every minute of it. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer.